Morning, continuous liners. Hi, hi, hi. This is Megan Burns coming to you live from the puffy clouds of Guanajuato, Guanajuato, Mexico. I'm here at Hugo Anaya's uh, Alma del Sol, and my goodness, what a glorious day it is here. I'm up on the rooftop. Let me just show you around. I know some of you are familiar with this place. Some of you have been here with me because this is where I do my Juan Owato workshops. Yeah, so um, this is where I do my sketching and printmaking workshops with my longtime buddy Ugo Anaya. And this is his gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous rooftop. Uh, that's the printmaking studio right in there, and Ugo is in there getting ready for his next round of people, right? And so this is where we have happy hours and do our, um, you know, our sketchbook check-ins, right? So I'm here because I'm getting ready for my Mexico City workshop, and uh, for my all my workshops, I make, uh, I make a t a canvas tote bag, so we have something to carry our sketchbooks in, right? So. I do these on a printing press. I, I cut this with a lino cut. I did a lino cut. What's it called? A lino cut. Cut. <laughs> of my logo right there. And uh, then it's two steps of printing, right? The black and then the red, right? That's my logo of continuous line storytelling and Megan Burns and Art Leap Adventures because it represents when you start drawing, continue, when you start drawing, really, it connects your heart with your eye, with your hands, or your crown chakra if you're into that kind of stuff. I'm into that kind of stuff, so that's why the logo is what it is. And um, yeah, so I'm here do, printing that up with, because uh, Ugo has got the printmaking studio, so I keep that stuff here. And it is a great excuse for me to come and see my buddy Ugo and hang out in Guanajuato a little bit. So I'm doing my continuous line uh, warm-ups right now I've already started it and I I know that I've start I I can tell because I'm already a little bit more decompressed right this is the beauty of this um, for me my continuous line warm-up practice right and I harp about it all the time and, and, you know, that's how we start my continuous line Zoom classes and all my workshops, right? All my workshops, we get into the groove with continuous line warm-ups. And the thing that's awesome about continuous line warm-ups is this is where we're just conditioning ourselves to just make lines. We're not drawing anything. We're just conditioning, right? Because oftentimes when you start sketching, it's scratch 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 because we're nervous and we don't we don't know how to draw but with practice well hello birdie <laughs> uh with practice and with a continuous line practice which is literally vitamins for your drawing you condition your eye and your hand well it conditions it for eye hand coordination and it conditions you to make a longer, perhaps more elegant line, right? That's kind of my shtick these days. I'm working on trying to get a more elegant line, right? I'm, you know, with the continuous line, I'm, I'm trying to tell my, I'm not going to say trying. I am telling my stories with less yet more elegant lines. You understand what I'm saying here? Because, you know, when I started sketching, it was like I filled every corner of the page. And I went out to the edge, 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 everywhere, right? And all in time and with practice and with continuous line, I'm trying, I don't go out to the edge. And it is my um, intent to tell my story with less lines, yet they're more elegant. And how do I get elegant lines? Well, I condition myself, right? I practice. Just like if, if you wanted to be a yogini, or if you wanted to climb mountains, or if you wanted to be an American gymnast, ha! Huh? You wanted to be a pole vaulter, ha! Huh? <laughs> you would have to practice these things, right? And the more you practice, just like anything, 
the better and perhaps more elegant you get, right? Like, take a look at, like, some of these American gymnasts, right? And I'm going to focus on the American gymnasts. I know there's a whole world of them. But the American gymnast team, could there be, I mean, were these ladies elegant? I mean, there's a lot of them. A lot of the gym, the, remember from when we were kids, like, they were great gymnasts, but now they're, like, next level. They're, like, they've, like, conditioned their bodies to be, like, not even of this world anymore because they practice so hard and they they make their bodies do things that you know i think when like i remember the 1976 was the first uh olympics that i remember nadia komanich right she was an amazing athlete uh but she was not doing the things the kids are doing today right so this is so you can kind of look at it like and i'm not knocking the 1976 athletes because they were of their time right but then you compare that to today's athletes and there's like all these ways that they can be more conditioned, right? Probably some nefarious ways too. But anyways, we're not here to talk about that. Um, but you just think they're like, these athletes are like top tier and they're also, you could say they're more elegant, right? Because they, they do more, they do, what am I trying to say? It's just um, athleticism. I almost said on steroids. Well, hopefully it's not on steroids, but who knows, right? Anyways, I'm not getting into that part of it. But so, yeah, my continuous line. Um, I I do this where I'm just doing nothing but a basic line, and I'm not drawing, and um, I'm just filling the page with my continuous line, right? Uh, it kind of takes the edge off of whatever my thoughts are. <laughs> uh, you know, I can get kind of riled up about things. Things have been a little interesting on the uh, in the news cycle, right? And uh, there's been, my goodness, thank goodness, we've got a little bit of relief. We've got a little bit of hope on the horizon, right? Now if we can just knock some of these monsters out of here, it would be even better. But, you know... This is where we're at, and thank God that there has been a break in the chaos, right? So it's really, it's, I, I think for a lot of people, there's a lot, it, the things are feeling a little bit more hopeful and not so chaotic and angsty, because honestly, we were, I mean, my God, right? So things are feeling a little bit more um, hopeful there, and so fingers crossed we keep going that way, right? Um, and so with all that, I mean, even if you try to stay away from the news, it's hard to, hard to stay away from the drama that is the United States, right? There's a lot of drama. Remember, it used to be celebrities, and now it's, like, all focused on politicians ever since the COVID. It's like, I mean, there's still celebrity stuff, but it just seems like the politics. I've never heard so much about politics before in my life. And now every day it's just like, blah, blah, orange, 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 blah, blah, monster, monster, liar, 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 liar. <laughs> hope. Hope. We're not going back. We are not going back. No way, Jose. We are not going back. So anyways, I'm going to stay focused on that. And... Um, yeah, and I also got invited to be part of an uh, art uh, opening here in San Miguel, in San Miguel uh, at the Chapel of Jimmy Ray. So after I get home from Guanajuato, I am grounded until, um, until I go to Mexico City because I am creating a whole new series of work for this um, event, which happens October 26th. I'm going to be uh, part of the new featured artist at uh, Anato McLaughlin's and Richard Schultz's Chapel of the Jimmy Ray in San Miguel de Allende. And if you've been there and if you know what I'm talking about, it's an amazing, amazing venue, experience, artistic uh, compound, right? All mosaic, really incredible. So I have uh, figured out what I'm going to do. And I have some of the pieces done, but I'm, after I get home from Guanajuato, I'm going into hiding <laughs> before my Mexico City workshop so I can get all these new pieces of work done. There will be some continuous line, but there's also going to be some watercolor. I don't really do a lot of watercolor because this whole idea, and okay, I'm going to be a little honest here. 
It drives me crazy how like everyone thinks the pretty watercolor is the goal, right? I like ugly watercolors because I mean, there's like this sort of this whole like stereotype. Oh, you, when you get older, you do all these beautiful landscapes and you do beautiful flowers and you do beautiful gardens and you do still life, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I don't like the pretty water. I mean, sure, I love a pretty watercolor, but um, I kind of like um, ugly watercolors too. And I like saturated inks and I like things that don't make sense. And I like whimsy and I like bright and I like, um, I like, I, that's why I like Mexico because it's colorful and it's confusion and it's chaos. And it's like, I can take all the confusion in my head and put it into my drawing, right? And so um, what helps me get to my core is a continuous line practice, right? Because it, it's sort of like, here's me on any given day. And then I start doing my continuous line practice and I go. And I start purring like a kitten. <laughs> um, anyways, that is what the continuous line does to my brain. It helps me kind of get a little bit more centered so that I can be a little bit more elegant with getting my drawing on the page, right? Anyways, I don't know if that's exactly how it works, but it kind of feels like it. My hair is blowing in my face, so I can put my hat on. There we go. My ajalote hat. Yeehaw! Um, yeah, so, uh, this month of August, we, in the continuous line storytelling, we're doing doubles, right? So whatever you draw, you draw two of, right? And I'm seeing such great drawings from everyone. Uh, what a fun practice, right? Cause the idea behind that, it's like cool to draw one thing, but if you draw two things, it's sort of, um, it teaches you composition and perspective, right? Because if you draw an ajolote this size, well, it is this size because this one is this size. Here, I should try to probably do, can I do an ajolote with my hands? I don't think so. <laughs> uh, so anyways, it's a really good practice and it can be as simple as like two glasses, two thumbs, two um, ponytails. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> so bravo to everyone who's doing that you know I kind of didn't always have the monthly drawing challenges but now I feel like it's an important part because there's enough people in the in the group where it's like there's always something that we can be doing right and it's a great way to stay engaged and in the practice right so anyways I am here in Guanajuato I've made my tote bags I've got to go get my postcards because I sell my postcards in a gallery here and uh, so that's what I'm going to do. Go get my postcards. And I'm going to finish big with a heart because, you know, these are crazy days. And uh, as always, right, life is always just a little insane. And so it's important just to remember to be, to go easy on yourself and go easy on others, right? There's a lot of, a lot of uh, reasons to sort of be annoyed with people, right? But I really, 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 I remind myself in it every single morning to do something nice because I don't remember on my own. I have to remind myself, be nice. <laughs> and, you, you know, that may sound silly, but I'm really just trying to be, kind of keep things like, I'm trying to remind myself to have grace for life, right? Because there's a lot of, like, uncertainty and a lot of people that annoy me, right? So to have grace and to be kind, right? Like even if it's just like holding the door open for someone, you know, um, or, you know, saying good morning, right? Simple things like that. And I finish my continuous line warm-ups with a heart <clears throat> to remember to go easy on myself and to go easy on others. I've already been out. I did a little urban sketching today with my pilot parallel. There's the church and the Plaza de la Paz right over the hill here in Guanajuato. All right, everyone. Uh, thank you for being a part of this like super cool group. Thanks for um, practicing your storytelling and sharing your lines with the continuous line storytelling, okay? Heart, heart, heart. Finish big with a heart. Okay, everyone, have a great weekend. I'll see you next time. Bye.